Full disclosure was in the midst of taping an outstanding Los Angeles Sheriff Candidate Forum with the four challengers to Sheriff Leroy Baca. Just as we were beginning a controversial segment on illegal immigration, the Hispanic staff at the Adelphia Studios in Eagle Rock shut us down. Even as we began introducing the topic, just watch and listen at what happened. Do you have any proposals about what to do about illegal immigration in L.A. County? Cut. Sorry. Uh oh, so good. We, we're ready. <laughs> we don't have time for this segment. We have to do the closing. We need to be out of the studio by 6 o'clock. We have a live production right after you. Our director, Harry Cooperstein, who's won an incredible 17 Emmys over his long career, who has also served numerous terms on the Board of Governors for the Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, told us that this has never happened to him before. Well, we also had some problems. We had three cameras. Only two cameramen were available. Our executive producer had to run one of the cameras, plus stage manage. Out of the three cameras, there were only two headsets. So we were going through some problems. Also, in all my years of experience, I've never had a, a show pulled on me before, or any of us, where we're in the middle of a segment or starting a segment. No, that's it. We're done. It's never happened. Why? Why did this happen? The studio staff locked us out of the studio for almost 20 minutes. And when our two-hour time ran out, they ordered the cameras shut down, claiming they had a live production following us. We questioned that this was the case at all. Professionally, you don't do that. I've never experienced anything like that before. We at Full Disclosure have long fought for our independence against censorship and controls by partisan politics and social agendas. And so we pursued our guests, the sheriff candidates, and interviewed them in our own studio and on our own location, where we were dedicated to making sure that we get the truth out, voiced by the very people who are directly involved in the issues. And so here is the unrestrained and unstoppable segment that Adelphia tried to stop, which once again demonstrates the name of our show and our mission, Full Disclosure. Los Angeles County Sheriff Leroy Baca has been a frequent guest on the Full Disclosure program. We were very disappointed when we learned from his campaign consultant, Park Skelton, that they were declining our invitation to appear on this, the Full Disclosure Sheriff's Candidate Forum. What is the role of Los Angeles County Sheriff when dealing with the illegal immigration? The Los Angeles Police Department is saddled with a Special Order 40, which prohibits police officers from asking a person's immigration status. We ask each of the sheriff candidates who are running against incumbent Sheriff Lee Baca what they plan to do to improve the performance of the sheriff's office in dealing with illegal immigrants. Here is the response by L.A. Sheriff Sergeant Paul Jernigan, followed by Glendale Police Lieutenant Don Meredith, and then Sheriff Captain Ray Leva. Basically, I'm not going to have my deputies go out into society and solely uh, look for illegal aliens to take to jail. What I want to do is focus on the crimes that the illegal aliens are committing and then use these immigration laws as a tool to combat the gangs, the drug dealers, sex offenders that are preying upon our society. When people are arrested for a crime, they're brought into the county jail facility. As it is now, the normal booking question is, are you a citizen of the United States and where were you born? If the answer is no and you've committed a felony crime, we have an obligation to notify the Immigration Service. Twofold. One is, is we need to go after cost recovery from the federal government for the expenditures that we are expending, investigating and housing these criminals who have committed crimes here. Secondly, if they have committed a felony here, we need to prosecute them for that felony and have them serve their sentence before being deported. And after they've done that sentence, they should be deported because I don't believe anybody is going to want a felon living in their neighborhood. We will we not engage in racial profiling because we don't do that. Uh, those folks that are found to be committing crimes, we will arrest, we will follow through the criminal process and from the DA through the courts. We will house them in our uh, jails until such time that it's ready for the federal government to intervene and then when ICE or any other federal entity is ready to, to become engaged, we will cooperate with them to make sure that the process is followed. 
Full Disclosure was unable to get a statement from Ken Massey because he couldn't fit it into his schedule. Candidate Paul Jernigan had a unique idea of changing the booking system in the county jail. What I will plan to do is I want to screen all people at the time of their arrest. Any person we arrest will be screened at the time of their arrest, not once a case has been filed against them. This is currently uh, what BACA follows, is that the person has to have a crime filed against them, and then once they reach the county jail, the downtown jail, that's when they're screened and holds are placed upon them. Both candidates, Meredith and Leva, agree that the federal government must be more involved and supportive in the processing of illegal immigrants. Well, the illegal immigration problem is a federal government responsibility. The job of the sheriff is to provide public safety for all persons in the county, whether they're here lawfully or unlawfully or visiting. He has an obligation to provide them protection, and if they commit a crime here, to arrest them and prosecute them for that crime as they would anybody else. But we also have to engage the federal government to get them to take a stronger role uh, or for them to become more engaged as far as their role because we have about 25 percent of our current population in the LA County system is an illegal uh, immigrant either from Mexico, China, Europe, wherever. And we will continue to build a federal government for the, all the days that we have the illegal immigrants in our custody that they don't take them out of our system. And last year that cost was over 70 million dollars and the federal government paid us $9 million. So we need to make sure that the federal government becomes more engaged in their role, and we will continue to do our part, which is to enforce the laws such as they are until the people change them. We have to take an aggressive Paul Jernigan took a different position. A lot of people in what I call the political cop-out um, by many um, uh, leaders in law enforcement, they use the excuse that it's a federal issue, they cannot enforce these federal laws. California Penal Code Section 834B as in boy lays out our responsibility and our duties in the enforcement of these immigration laws. We ask each of the candidates to summarize their position and identify what they considered the most important or most critical element for the LA County Sheriff in confronting the problems caused by illegal immigration. The number one problem facing the uh, Sheriff's Department is the fact that we are having to house you know, 28 percent of our population on a daily basis at a tune of about $64 a day per person and not being totally reimbursed by the federal government for it, number one. Number two, that 28 percent are committing felony crimes here. You know, it, 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 that's a significant problem. As the sheriff of uh, L.A. County, our role is to abide by the law and enforce it such as it is today. So that's what we'll do. We will continue to enforce the law as it is or until such changes are made by the federal government, which really is the key player in, the, in this immigration issue, and by the rule that, or roles that the state then puts into place for us to abide by the federal enforcement. I think the sheriff of Los Angeles County, being the most powerful sheriff in the world, has an obligation to influence policy at all levels in regards to all aspects of law enforcement. He has an obligation to work with legislative officials and, if need be, sue the federal government to go after cost recovery so the federal government t steps up the plate and takes responsibility and effectively staffs security for all of our borders and ports of entry. When we identify gang members, uh, drug dealers, and sex offenders, there's a lot of times when we do not have enough evidence to arrest these people. But if we use the immigration laws, we can screen them and if we find that they're here illegally, we can go and detain them and have them deported. It's another way to get them out of our society so they're not preying upon our citizens. It's the fact that we have 25 to 27 percent of our population that that's illegal, self-admitted illegal status, that the federal government has not stepped up in its role to provide additional ICE officials uh, at the back end of the system where we're releasing these people because on a daily basis we'll release seven to eight hundred people and the government the federal government has only assigned five immigration officers to sit there and screen and address the issue that of these seven eight hundred people uh, at least 150 to 200 may be illegal and need to be detained for deportation or further processing on the government side but with only five agents and only eight hours a day that they're working they don't have the ability to do that. We asked so, Captain Leva to clarify. 
They are releasing seven to 800 criminals on early release due to overcrowding in the jails. And among the sea of convicts are criminals known to be illegal immigrants, we ask him? Oh, absolutely. And it happens every day. Because as I've said, the, there's only five agents to work those 700 people that are being released. Up to 200 to 250 of those that are being released are here illegally in some form or fashion. And they may even have been no, uh, caught prior and deported or given a citation to appear at a later time by, uh, by an ICE agent and never appeared. So they've already got a prior violation of failing to appear for a federal charge. Yet because those five agents only don't have the ability to screen the 200 to 250 completely, some of those people will be released again. So and shame on the federal government for not stepping up, not providing the funding for us to care and house for these inmates. And as I said, it's been $70 million just for last year alone. And they gave us $9 million. So shame on them for not providing the agents to work the, the back end, providing the funding for us to, uh, to allow us to do other things that we need to do with our funding, and stepping up as a partner in this whole process. That's what we really need to look at doing, and getting the federal government involved, as they should be. We want to know what you think. Please respond to our survey. Should sheriff's deputies be authorized to enforce federal immigration laws, yes or no? And do you think the full disclosure production was deliberately sabotaged by the Adelphia cable staff to stop these police officials from expressing their strong opinions on illegal immigration? Yes or no? Please be sure to leave your comments below. Thank you.